Hey you guys, it's Ayana Hanaya and this is Ayana Hanaya in your business. This is episode three. I'm really excited. Um, I'm probably going to say that I'm really excited for like the next 20 something episodes. So just bear with me because I'm really excited. This is fun. I like doing this. I even, let me tell you, it's so much fun. I didn't even write out, I'm sorry, I didn't even type out what I was going to say. I actually wrote it out. You know, I was just so I'm like, yes, yes, yes. And this is what you do. And this is what you do. I was just writing away. And I'm like, oh, I can't wait. I'm so excited. So I'm excited. I, um, I'm going to jump right into it because I just recorded this. And believe it or not, if you know me, you believe it. I just spent like 12 minutes talking about something else. <laughs> so I'm re-recording and I am making myself stay on topic. So let's jump to the topic, how to pick a hosting platform and what I use. So let's start off with what is a hosting platform, okay? And let me say there's no such thing as a silly question. Now there's some stupid questions. Like, no, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm saying. There's no such thing as a silly question, okay? Some people don't know what a hosting platform is. Some people do. So for those who don't, made simple, a hosting platform is any service or platform that allows an organization or individual to build, create, and publish their website onto the internet, okay? So that's what a hosting platform is. Now I will say, please don't confuse a web domain with um, you know, the actual web host. Your domain is simply the name of your website, but having or purchasing um, your web domain name does not mean that you automatically have a website. And I'm only saying this because I've actually spoke to, spoken to um, quite a few people and I've been like, oh, okay, well, you know, do you have a business card or what's your website? And they'll say, oh, it's www.thisismywebsite.com and I'll go to it and it's like, you know, the domain name you've entered has not yet been you know, whatever. And I'm like, okay, so you don't have a website, but you purchase your domain name, which is great. You know, it's awesome to purchase your domain name. You're headed in the right direction, but that's not the same as having your website published. So try not to get those two confused. And, um, a little tip for you, if you go to GoDaddy, which is who I prefer to buy web domain names from, if you go to GoDaddy, once you purchase your domain name, they usually let you create a free landing site or free landing page. Um, and it's really, 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 I was about to say a free landing page for free. That's why I got tongue twisted. But anyway, it's really easy. You just upload your logo or, you know, whatever image you want to use, type your name in. And, you know, you can say things like, hey, my t-shirt business will be launching soon. Or, you know, candles are us is coming next week. So that way you can start having some attention going to your website and you can put as much information as possible on your landing page. And you can even have your landing page be a funnel to something else. You can say, you know, our website will be up in a few weeks, but in the meantime, visit our Instagram or visit our Facebook page or call us at or visit us at 1919 78th Street. You know what I mean? And just have that up you know, in the meantime, that way you can say, yes, I do have a website. And when they go to it, they know, you know, what to anticipate next. So I'm not going to get on another side note, hopefully. <laughs> um, so when you're deciding who you want to use for your web host, listen, okay, I'll, I won't get off track yet. Anyway, you'll need to understand that there's some determining factors or there should be some determining factors in who you choose. Don't just choose a web hosting platform because it's free or because it's easy or because it was the cheapest. Because sometimes you'll do that and you'll put all this hard work and effort into it and you'll realize, man, I really need more from this. Or you'll do that and you'll realize, man, this is really crappy, you know? So don't, don't do that. Don't just go with the cheapest version just because it's available. You really need to you know, consider what you need and consider, you know, your non-negotiables. If your non-negotiable is, I just need something where I can book. If you're a hairstylist and all you want to do is book appointments and put photos up, then you might not even need a full website. You could just join Style Seat. You know what I mean? So, so first, before you go and making these huge plans to have a website, write down what it is that you feel like you need to have on your website and then start searching for which hosting site you should use. Um, 
these are just some questions that I think you should ask yourself when you're considering. Number one is, do you need to be able to have a store? Now, this is important because a lot of times you didn't even know that you needed to have a store. So you might want to just keep that in mind on the back end. Some people, like I'll tell you the truth for me, on ayanahanaya.com, um, initially that was just so that I could book appointments with my clients. And then as my website grew, as my brand grew, as I grew, I was like, you know what? I want to blog. I have stuff I want to talk about and I want to share. And then as my blog grew and my Instagram grew and my interaction grew and I started having people asking me like, oh, where'd you get this from? Where'd you get that from? I'm like, you know what? I want to store on my website. I want to be able to sell stuff. And I live in Georgia. <clears throat> I live in Georgia, but I have people who visit my website from Texas. I have people who visit my website from New Jersey, from New York, from Pennsylvania, from South Carolina, North Carolina, Delaware, Virginia. So it's like, I want them to be able to go on my website and not say, oh man, she, I, she can't do my hair. You know, I don't want them to go on my website and say that. I want them to go on my website and be like, oh, I love this blog that I read on her website. Oh, when I went on her website, I found a link to this awesome other website that I can get, you know, my website built on. Or, oh, I went on her website and I ordered this shirt that said, mompreneur you know so i didn't know that i needed those things at first but when i was searching for which web platform i wanted to use my number one thing was um, creativity i wanted to make sure that i can be as creative as possible and that i can build in the future so that's that was important to me about whether or not i needed a store i didn't know if i did at first but i just knew that eventually i might want to so um that was something that i asked myself um, you should also ask yourself, do you need to be able to have um, complete creative freedom with no limits when creating your site? And I say this because some platforms will allow you to build your site. They're like, heck yeah, come build your site with us. But then they'll tell you, hey, look, you can't go out these, these lines right here. And you can't put any words below here. And you can't do this from this point. And then <laughs> you're like, dang, I can't do nothing. You know, you can't change your background. You can only put pictures where they say you can put pictures at. And a lot of times those sites are more affordable and they're really, really easy to build, but they don't offer you as much after that. After being affordable and easy to build, it's like, okay, so that's it. Like, I don't really get nothing of substance. And it's like, no, you know, it was just cheap and easy. So, you know, it's nothing long term that comes from cheap and easy. Anyway. Um, you should also ask yourself, do you only need to be able to post blogs and pictures? Because sometimes you don't need something super fancy if you're going to be posting blogs and pictures to go with the blog. You know, you can have your Pinterest like super decked out and have it lead into your blog and your blog page could just be, you know, each page if you want on your website could be a blog or you just have a picture here, words here, next page, picture here, words here, next page. Um, and then also think about how much money you want to spend. Like, what's your budget? If you're like, listen, I can't spend no more than $40 a month or $12 a month or $300 a year or $600 a year. You know, those are things to think about too, because personally, I wouldn't go and get your hopes up on a, on a, a website that you're like, man, I love all their features, but you know, you can't afford a $400 a year, you know, website. So those are things to think about after you create your list just go over it and compare it to um, the different hosting platforms see what they have to offer versus what you want or what you want versus what they have to offer my top websites would be uh, Wix I love Wix I use Wix I love Wix I'm able to do so much with Wix I have uh, booking email marketing blog I have a store like it's a lot you can do with Wix so personally it's my favorite um, I don't use Big Cartel but I really like Big Cartel I like them because um, if you're a store you can go ahead and start selling your products without paying them at first they have a free plan where you can upload like 10 10 is a minimum I think nine or ten items on your store but that's cool because let's say you're starting out and you only sell five t-shirts right now 
that's you know it's, it's nice to have the option to start out for free and still be able to design a nice website so big cartel they give you that um, I also like Weebly I, I don't use um, Weebly for Ayana Hanai anymore just because I need a little bit more from it but um, if you're starting out Weebly is good and also if you're starting out you can do a, um, a site through Swear now Square actually partnered with Weebly or they might have bought Weebly out I don't know but it says Square Weebly up top and you can build yourself a really nice store and the cool thing with them is that you pay a low monthly cost and because they're checking out with Square anyway on your site you still have to pay like the percentage that Square takes out um, you know when they receive a payment but that's it you know there's no extra fee I know some some platforms they charge you like for uh, Wix, I have to use Wix payments on Wix. I prefer to use Square at checkout, but if you're using Wix, you gotta use Wix payments. Or you can use PayPal as an option, but they prefer for you to use Wix payments. But I, I personally, I like Square, so I do like that with the Square slash Weebly option, you're able to check out with Square. I really like Square's dashboard. I like how they break down you know your taxes for you at the end of the year I just really like square but that's for another I'm not gonna get off topic oops I'm not gonna get off topic again um, I also like WordPress I don't think WordPress is really easy but I do think that um, it's good I also like Shopify Shopify makes it really really easy and they have so many apps that you can use to help you really really sell whatever you want and have a really really good site and I like that they have um, a mobile app too you know so you don't have to always get on the computer to do stuff I, that's a big thing for me too I like hosting platforms that have a mobile app that gives you something else you know with Wix I have the mobile app so if somebody's right in front of me I can go ahead and take their appointment right away and put it in right through my app or if I'm doing a coaching session, I can go in and say, oh, okay, and everything is organized, their name is there, where we left off last time with their coaching. Um, you know, I can do automatic payments or automatic payment withdrawals. Um, chats, if you go to my website and you're like, hey, I got a quick question, I'm gonna send her a chat message real quick, you can do that, and it all goes right to my phone. If I'm out and I'm taking pictures and I wanna upload it right to my website, I can Excuse me, I can do that right from my phone through the app. So I love, I don't know, I just love Wix. I love Wix. Um, the second thing after creativity is having a good mobile view. So this is important. A lot of people build their website to look good online. Now I know because I get it, I really do, I get it. You want the most for your website. And I know it breaks my heart when I put so much effort into my website but the mobile version it just looks so mobile you know it's just like picture picture words words picture picture um, but with Wix again Wix you know you can do slideshows um, you can have videos come up it gives you a few more options but some websites their mobile views are really really bad either that or sometimes people forget to go in and edit and create a mobile version I don't know but I just know that when you decide what you want to use you need to make sure that the mobile view is great too because everybody uses their cell phone so make sure that it looks good on the cell phone if it's if your website is not easy to use on a mobile device I promise you people aren't gonna go on it and that's just real like 80% of people who go on my website go from phones and that's another thing that I love the statistics you know um, Wix lets me know what percentage of people are using phones, what percentage of people are using you know, tablets or iPads, what percentage are using a desktop. So people go, people use their phones all the time. So just make sure your mobile view is popping, okay? Um, another thing that's important to me is integrated email marketing. Now you can definitely use MailChimp. Um, I use MailChimp for one of my businesses and it's great. Um, but for that particular business, my assistant is more so over it. So I'm, I'm not on it all the time, but for Ayana Hanaya, I, that's the one that I do by myself all the time, and I like that it has an integrated email marketing service because, once again, from the app, right on my iPad, I just go ahead and design my email, I type what I wanted to say, and I send it out all from the app because it's all integrated in. Um, I also care about having an easy checkout. 
So quick story, about six years ago when I had my first online store, people would get to check out and then just leave their stuff in the cart. And it would like piss me off because you know, you, well not you know, but there's ways where you can see um, like how many abandoned carts you have. And I'd be like, man, why do people always get to, to the end and they don't check out? So I actually, I asked somebody one time, I, um, I emailed a customer because she had made a purchase and but it took her so long to make the purchase it was like she just kept going back she kept having this stuff in her cart so okay when I say this stuff you guys I'm not just crazy once you build your website you have access to so many um, what's the proper word is it analytics <laughs> like you have so many resources you can see everything you can see person's IP address you can see you know the time how long they spent on what page what item they just clicked it's amazing what you can see um, so anyway after she finally purchased you know I, I sent her an email and which at the time I wasn't even thinking like that's creepy to send her an email asking why it took her so long so I don't even have that business anymore but <laughs> yeah thinking out loud I'm like that is weird like why would you do that but anyway um, I asked her and I was like hi I just wanted to know um, you know what made you decide on purchasing this finally and you know I don't remember how it worded it but basically I asked her I'm like what's up why take you so long to buy it so she was like because it was difficult to check out she was like I had to put in all this information because you know we're lazy like truth be told when it comes to doing stuff ordering stuff if we got to type in our first middle and last name and the zip, like if it's not gonna auto enter a lot of us are like I'm not about to buy this right now it's too much that's just the truth you know so she was like um, it just it was too much it was too many questions she was like she had to put too much information in and she just didn't feel like dealing with it and it was then that I realized this was 2013 I'm like okay people like simple stuff so I ended up having a switch because at the time the hosting platform that I was using they didn't offer PayPal so I ended up having a switch so I could use PayPal so people could check out faster and once I did that I used I started getting orders more frequently and less abandoned carts so make sure it's easy to check out um, the, the next thing that was important to me on my site was booking I knew that I didn't want to just be on style seat and there's nothing wrong with being on style seat as a hairstylist or a barber or a makeup artist. It's amazing and it gives people the opportunity to, you know, see you without you having to do so much advertising for yourself. However, I know that I personally didn't want people going on there and like comparing my prices with somebody else's and comparing my work with somebody else's. I just wanted people to go to my website, see my work, see my prices and say I want her. And I didn't want them to have to go through another a third party in order to book me and then get distracted because I'm not the best hairstylist in the world you know what I'm saying I'm not the best makeup artist in the world but when you go to my site you know you want to book me or I mean I don't know why you want to book me but <laughs> from my experience a lot of people have actually booked me not because they're like oh you seem like you girl you do crochet the best no they're like oh site and I loved you I loved your picture I loved your blog I loved when you said that you love being a mom I love you know that your favorite color was this people stalk you now like that's the truth people will stalk the mess out of you I had one person and she didn't know but <laughs> because okay so on Wix right once somebody signs up and they're a subscriber whenever they go onto your website you can see so it'll say like Susan is now on your website so there was this person I'm just gonna say Susan and I was like Susan from such and such is now on your website Susan from such and such is now on your website and I'm like man she did my website a whole lot like I ain't got that much on there for her to be on as much as she on but she was like she was checking me out basically she was checking me out before she talked to me and when I met her, she told me, she was like, I went on your website a whole lot and I was reading your blogs and I'm gonna need your pictures and I was reading your about me and then I finally booked you. And I've had people say something to me like, oh, I went on Yelp and read about you and then I went on Google and read about you and then I went on your Instagram and was looking at stuff about you and then I went on your website and I decided to book you. Like people, listen, 
people be digging, you know what I'm saying, before they make decisions sometimes. So for me, like I said, I just like it where you can do everything on my site because I don't want you to go somewhere else and get distracted. That's just the truth. Um, the last thing is just the blog. I wanted to be able to kind of have freedom um, over how I did my blog because, see, the thing about my website is this. There's so, there's so much, there's not a whole, whole, whole lot, but if you go on my website, I have videos, I have my podcast, I have pictures, I have booking, I have photos, I have, um, uh, a coaching session or coaching forms that you could fill out. I have, like, I have a store, I have a whole lot. So I wanted to be able to have a whole lot but still have, if I wanted to, each page look different, each page feel different, but still have a theme. I wanted to be able to have a blog where, I'm talking about if you view it like on a desktop or on a laptop, on a mobile version, you know, like I said, there's but so much you could do. But I wanted to be able to, if I wanted to have pictures in between words, just do whatever I want. That's what I cared about. That's why, that's why my first thing was I wanted to be able to create it however I wanted to. Um, so yes, I hope that, that helped you, you understand, you know, how you should pick your hosting platform, what it is, you know, why it's so important to, you know, be knowledgeable about, knowledgeable about the platform you choose before you choose it. It's kind of like, you know, looking for a house, like you want to make sure the neighborhood is good and safe and pretty and clean and, you know, that you can park your car on the sidewalk or, you know, wherever. It, it's almost just as important as that. I know somebody's like, it's not as important to pick out, as picking out your house, girl. But no, it's, it's super, super, super important because it represents you and it represents your brand. So you want it to be, you want it to be amazing. Um, so I'm going to write up a blog about which hosting platforms are good and why. They're not going to be probably in order, but it's just going to be um, a blog. So you can visit my website for that probably sometime next week. And anyway, thank you so, so, so much, you guys, for listening to me. Um, for those who are listening on the podcast, thank you for watching and listening to me. For those who are on IGTV, I just, I appreciate you. And that's it. All right. Bye.